If you're in the market for a new high-end gaming GPU under $1,000, should you buy an NVIDIA RTX 5070 Ti or AMD RX 9070 XT? In this video, we are going to find out. My name is Matt, I'm a former rocket scientist, and my goal is to help you make the right component choices and put them together the right way every single time. In the UPC FC series, we've been helping you make the right choice by pitting two components against each other in the PC Octagon to see who wins. In this video, our focus will be on two top gaming GPUs with the AMD Radeon RX 9070 XT in the red corner, taking on the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 5070 Ti in the blue corner. In addition to showing you benchmarks across 19 games, I will also demystify upscaling technologies, show you how the performance of these cards changes with overclocking and how the value changes with real world pricing. And if you stick around, I'll be giving away a Power Color Red Devil RX 9070 XT, something you will definitely not want to miss. It's really not rocket science, so before the main event gets started, let's jump straight into demystifying game engine upscaling technologies. Image upscaling has become a common graphics option in PC games. In most modern titles, depending on your GPU, you'll be presented with choices between Nvidia's Deep Learning Super Sampling or DLSS, AMD's Fidelity FX Super Resolution or FS or Intel's XE Super Sampling or XESS. All are upscaling technologies that promise higher frame rates in games. Nvidia has enjoyed an early advantage in terms of image quality, however, AMD recently released a new version of FSR with their new RDNA 4 graphics cards, so it'll be interesting to see if this will be enough to bridge the gap. At a high level, upscaling technologies such as FSR and DLSS render your game at a lower resolution to improve performance. They then use algorithms to upscale the image to fit your monitor and fill in missing information based on various inputs. Despite accomplishing the same goal, FSR and DLSS used to leverage very different approaches. Older versions of FSR used an algorithm to upscale the image and fill in missing details before applying a sharpening filter. It was basically Temporal Super Resolution or TSR, but with AMD's branding. However, with the introduction of FSR 4, AMD moved away from a software-only approach to a machine learning-based approach that leverages dedicated AI hardware, which is very similar to DLSS. AMD claims that this approach significantly improves image quality over FSR 3.1, with better detail preservation and reduce ghosting and artifacts. The downside is that it's only available on 9000 series GPUs, since earlier Radeon cards do not have the hardware accelerated features found in the new RDNA 4 architecture. So which upscaling technology is better? If we take a look at two games that use the latest version of these upscalers, Horizon Forbidden West and Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, we should be able to answer this question. First, let's start by comparing FSR 3 to FSR 4 so we can see if AMD was actually able to improve image quality. It's immediately apparent that FSR 4 is a far superior implementation of upscaling, fixing virtually all of the issues we saw with FSR 3. For example, a big area where FSR 3 struggled was with ghosting. But as you can see with FSR 4, this has been resolved with the waterfall now showing the water particles as intended, in a much more realistic way. If we now compare FSR 4 with DLSS, it's clear that FSR 4 is superior to the DLSS 3 CNN model, delivering better detail. However, when you compare it to the DLSS 4 Transformer model, it falls behind. If we look closely at the pout, rope and quiver, DLSS 4 clearly offers superior image quality, with FSR 4 not too far behind, occupying a place between the CNN and Transformer models in terms of detail and anti-aliasing. For high motion sequences, the ranking doesn't really change, with the Transformer model again showing superior clarity and image quality. If we take a look at Ratchet & Clank, this advantage isn't always maintained, with the DLSS 4 Transformer model offering better background detail, while FSR 4 shows less aliasing or jaggedness in the confetti. With that said, AMD is technically still behind Nvidia in terms of image reconstruction, but they took a huge leap forward with the introduction of FSR 4. Upscaling is now a feature you can look forward to on an AMD GPU, something that was tough to claim in the past. FSR 4 is better than the DLSS 3 CNN model in key areas, but it's not quite at the level of the DLSS 4 Transformer model. As mentioned earlier, the battle today is between two top gaming GPUs with the Radeon RX 9070 XT in the red corner, taking on the GeForce RTX 5070 Ti in the blue corner. The test system being used to run the benchmarks is my AMD AM5 open bench table with the following components. For the CPU, we have an AMD Ryzen 7 9800X 3D. For the motherboard, we have an ASUS ROG Crosshair X 870E Hero. For RAM, we have G-Skill Ripjaws M5 Neo RGB 32GB of DDR5 6000 at CL26. For the first GPU, we have an MSI GeForce RTX 5070 Ti Ventus 3X OC. For the second GPU, we have a Sapphire Nitro Plus AMD Radeon RX 9070 XT. 
For the CPU cooler, we have an ASUS ROG Ryo 3 360mm AIO. For storage, we have a 4TB Samsung 990 Pro NVMe Gen 4 M.2 SSD. And for the PSU, we have a Corsair HX 1200i Platinum 1200W power supply. Affiliate links for all of these components are listed in the description below. All benchmark testing was performed with the GPUs at their default clocks. For the MSI RTX 5070 Ti Ventus 3X, this means a boost clock increase of 30MHz over the reference spec. Whereas for the Sapphire Nitro Plus RX 970 XT, this means a core clock increase of 105 megahertz and a boost clock increase of 90 megahertz over the reference spec. I also applied a number of performance enhancing tweaks to the 9800X3D, which can be found in my How to Tune an AMD AM5 Ryzen CPU step-by-step -step guide video. In order to thoroughly test the GPUs, I ran the benchmarks at ultra graphics settings. I test GPUs at ultra settings because this places maximum load on each GPU, which is the best way to compare relative performance. In addition, I decided against using frame generation for the benchmarks to avoid any biasing of the results. I did, however, use upscaling, but only when it was automatically selected as part of the standard graphics option which when used is clearly denoted on the charts. And finally, I added a new game to the benchmark suite, Monster Hunter Wilds, which has been well received and has a fantastic built-in benchmark. One thing I really appreciate is that the game developers let you download the benchmark without buying the game, something I wish all other game developers would do. With the GPUs ready to go, let's check the benchmarks. But before we do, I think it's only appropriate to introduce this the right way. Over to you, Bruce. And now... It's time! Introducing the components fighting for Blackbird PC Tech Benchmark Supremacy! In the blue corner, we have the Champion! In the red corner, we have the Challenger! Who will win this battle royale? Stay tuned to find out! As you can see from the benchmark results, the 9070 XT performed extremely well against the 5070 Ti at default clocks, beating it across all resolutions. 
But what happens when we try overclocking the GPUs? There are two primary ways to overclock a GPU. You can use an automatic option, such as the automatic tuning features in Adrenaline and the Nvidia app, or you can tune it manually using Adrenaline or a third-party tool like Asus GPU Tweak 3. When I used the automatic tuning option in Adrenaline for my Sapphire Nitro Plus 9070 XT, it resulted in a GPU boost clock of 103 megahertz. Keep in mind that the Sapphire Nitro Plus has significantly higher core and boost clocks compared to the AMD spec for the 9070 XT, so this boost boost is on top of that. When I use the automatic tuning option in the NVIDIA app for my MSI RTX 5070 Ti Ventus 3X, it resulted in a GPU boost clock of 80 MHz and memory clock boost of 200 MHz, which is good. Again, this is a factory overclock card, so you've got to keep that in mind. To see what impact this overclock had on performance, I ran 3 Mark Speedway, Port Royal and Steel Nomad. As you can see from the results, the performance boost for the 9070 XT was not meaningful, with a roughly 1% increase in scores. This should not come as a surprise given that the card was somewhat insensitive to changes in GPU frequency offset. The performance boost for the 5070 Ti, however, was meaningful, with a roughly 6% increase in scores. The automatic tuning option takes significantly longer to run in the Nvidia app, but it results in a much more meaningful increase in performance. To find the max overclock for my RX 9070 XT, I used the custom option in Adrenaline under tuning presets, which gives you full tuning control. To learn how to dial in an optimum overclock for an AMD Radeon GPU, you can follow the steps I outline in my How to Undervolt and Overclock a Radeon RX 9070 XT video. For my Sapphire Nitro Plus, RX 9070 XT, I was able to decrease the voltage offset by 100 millivolts and increase the memory clock by 160 megahertz, which is good. To find the max overclock for my RTX 5070 Ti, I use GPU Tweak 3 from ASUS, which allows you to adjust the power target, GPU voltage, GPU boost clock, and memory clock. To learn how to dial in an optimum overclock, you can follow the steps I outline in my How to Overclock Your GPU the Right Way guide. For my MSI RTX 5070 Ti Ventus 3X, I was able to increase the GPU boost clock by 448 MHz and the memory clock by 1500 MHz, which is great. To see what impact these overclocks have on performance, I reran 3D Mark Speedway, Port Royal, and Steel Nomad. As you can see from the results, the increase in performance for my Sapphire Nitro Plus 9070 XT was good, with improvements of around 7% over the default base clocks. This card is heavily overclocked from the factory, so it's not surprising to see high single-digit overclock performance increases. Now compare that to the MSI 5070 Ti Ventus 3X, where the increase in performance is significant, with an average of around 13.5%. This card has a much more mild factory overclock, and much like the RTX 5080, has been designed with exceptionally good overclocking headroom. Given the relatively poor performance against the 9070 XT at stock settings, it appears that it would have been smart for Nvidia to use some of the margin to increase the default clocks, something they will likely fix with a future supermodel. If you look at the temperatures, both cards run cool, even with a max overclock, so the cooler on both cards appear to be more than sufficient. That said, the memory temperatures for the 9070 XT are relatively high, which is likely limiting the max overclock potential for the VRAM on these cards. If we now look at some games, starting with Total War Warhammer 3, it becomes clear that the performance increases are almost identical to the 3D Mark results, with average increases of 13.1% for the 5070 Ti and 6.9% for the 9070 XT. In fact, when you look at all of the games I tested, you see very similar results, with average increases of 138 and 6.9% in Cyberpunk 2077, 145 and 7.7% 7 .7 in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020, 133 and 6.6% .6 in Call of Duty Black Ops 6, and 14 and 5.4% in Monster Hunter Wilds. So even though the RTX 5070 Ti is an exceptionally good overclocker, it's not enough to close the gap with the 9070 XT in most games. Furthermore, as I stated in my previous video, the notion that 3 d Mark GPU benchmarks cannot be used as surrogates for games is simply not true. These benchmarks are non-playable games that are designed and developed to test your GPU in exactly the same way that modern games do. It's also important to keep in mind that these results are silicon dependent, so if you plan to overclock your GPU, then please use these settings as guidance only. Given that the RX 9070 XT is the top card for AMD for this generation, a few questions that keep coming up are, can it compete with an RTX 5080? And is it better than an RX 7900 XTX? Now that we've found a max overclock for the RX 9070 XT, let's run a few games and see if we can answer these questions. If we look at Total War Warhammer 3 and compare our overclocked 9070 XT to the 7900 XTX and 5080 in stock conditions, you see that it beats the 7900 XTX by around 2%, but loses to the 5080 by around 7%. If we now look at Cyberpunk 2077, a game that uses ray tracing, you can see that 9070 XT destroys the 7900 XTX by around 30%. 
10% and gets within 10% of the 5080, which is extremely impressive, especially when you consider that it beats the 5080 by around 20% and 1% lows. This is a title that heavily favors Nvidia GPUs, so this gen to gen improvement in performance by AMD is exceptional. And finally, if we turn our attention to Call of Duty Black Ops 6, a game that has traditionally favored AMD GPUs, you can see that the 9070 XT beats the 5080 by a whopping 35% and 1% lows and matches the 7900 XTX in average performance, while also beating it in 1% lows. A very impressive showing from a card that costs anywhere from 20 to 50% less. But what happens if we also overclock the 7900 XTX and RTX 5080? Looking at the 3 d Mark GPU benchmarks, you can see that an overclocked 9070 XT does indeed beat an overclocked 7900 XTX, but the RTX 5080 is able to extend its lead due to the excellent overclocking performance of this card. So to answer the questions based on these results, 9070 XT is a better gaming card compared to the 7900 XTX, but it can't quite match the performance of an RTX 5080. In this video, we pitted two top gaming GPUs against each other in the PC Octagon to see who will emerge victorious, with the AMD Radeon 9070 XT in the red corner, taking on the Nvidia GeForce RTX 5070 Ti in the blue corner. The round by round results show a dominant victory for the 9070 XT, with 10 wins, 5 losses and 4 draws across 19 hard fought rounds. When you look at the performance across 18 games, you see that the 9070 XT wins at every resolution, with particularly impressive 1% low performance, which results in a much higher quality gaming experience. It's also interesting to see just how much of a leap AMD has been able to make with ray tracing. If you look at Cyberpunk 2077 and F1 2024, two games that prior gen GPUs struggled in, you can see that 9070 XT is not only able to compete with the 5070 Ti, but beat it, which is a truly remarkable result. If we now look at professional workloads, you can see that in some applications, such as Maya and 3DS Max, the 5070 Ti wins, while in others, such as Katia and NX, the 9070 XT wins. So as with all professional applications, it's important to understand if the software you use is optimized for a specific GPU before making a purchase. Another area where AMD GPUs have struggled in the past is power efficiency. And although AMD has made improvements, they are still a long way behind Nvidia with differences in average efficiency of around 30%. This is likely one of the contributing reasons why AMD decided not to release a higher end card for this generation, since a power draw would have exceeded the 600 watt limit for a single 12 volt high power cable. But what happens when we look at cost? The MSI RTX 5070 Ti Ventus 3X launched at $830, which is about $50 higher than the launch price for the Sapphire Nitro Plus RX 9070 XT. So if you convert those prices into gaming efficiency or FPS per dollar at 4K, then it becomes clear that the 9070 XT offers better value, with increases of around 10% in average FPS and 20% in 1% lows. However, anyone that has attempted to buy one of these cards after launch will tell you that they are selling for much more. Given the impact of tariffs, availability, retail agreed and scalpers, it becomes difficult to lock in a stable real world price for each GPU. So I found the best way to tackle this is to plot FPS per dollar versus price for each card. This allows you to clearly see that if you were to purchase a card on eBay, not only would you be encouraging scalpers, but the value of both cards would be reduced by at least 25%. It also shows just how aggressive AMD was with their launch pricing for these cards. If you were able to pick up a 9070 XT at $600 on launch day, then consider yourself very lucky, because it offers truly exceptional value at that price. Unfortunately, I don't think we're going to see those prices again, even when base models come back in stock. So should you buy an RTX 5070 Ti or RX 9070 XT. Given the performance, price and improved feature set, the AMD Radeon RX 9070 XT is an outstanding GPU, even if it's above the launch pricing established by AMD. The RTX 5070 Ti is not a bad option, but given the significant improvements AMD made in upscaling and ray tracing, Nvidia can no longer command such a high price premium. What AMD has been able to do with RDNA 4 is produce a gaming card that offers excellent performance with all of the bells and whistles at a much better price, making the 5070 Ti somewhat irrelevant. If you also include the fact that Nvidia has had multiple driver issues since the launch of the 50 series cards, then the 9070 XT is a much more compelling option and an easy card to recommend. Remember, it's not rocket science, it's Lego. My goal is to help you make the right component choices and put them together the right way every single time. Thank you for watching this video in the Ultimate PC Component Fighting Championship Battle Series. To celebrate hitting the 10,000 subscriber milestone, I'll be giving away a brand new Power Color Red Devil Radeon RX 9070 XT to one lucky member. I know how difficult it is at the moment to get your hands on a next-gen GPU, so hopefully this will help a member avoid the scalpers and be able to game on this amazing GPU. Details on how to enter are listed in the description below. Good luck and bye for now.